Hola, mi amigos. It's your fourth favorite voice on the internet, Officer Dan, and we and them boys at GK Tech are back with yet another how-to. This time up on the chopping block are our brand new GR, GT86, PRZ, and FRS inner tie rods. Now, you may be asking, Dan, this is such a simple part. Why would I, a master of all things mechanical, need an install video for them? Well, this my amazing compadres from the internet is going to be video numero uno in a series of vids tackling the real meat potatoes of our newest addition to the GK Tech family, the GT86 Super Lock Angle Kit. That's right, we've sliced it up into easy to swallow bits on how to get as much lock as safely and humanely as possible. Then we'll ramp up the difficulty with the rest of the kit as time goes on. So on our rotisserie sits the saddest Christmas turkey you've ever seen, aka the GK Tech inner tie rod in all of its glory, and boom, then there were two. Now you can clearly see here one is shorter than the other whilst lined up next to each other just like in real life. Also just like in real life, Mr. Short is good for living a life where OEM is the way. Mating up with a normal boring stock LCA or shorter LCAs for some reason, or maybe just adding a few millimeters to the stock length, not exciting, but an option nonetheless. Then you have the one that the ladies seem to flock to, but you can't understand why. And those of us in the industry call that the BDE, and that's what this guy has. He's here to party and make sure everyone knows it. These are for the dudes that are after that LCA that is wide as humanly possible headed to the moon and or wider. We'll talk about lengths a little bit later in the vid for you and our pleasure, so stay tuned for that. Now, what really sets these guys apart is the junk in the trunk, aka the additional five millimeters added to the base. It's like having tie rod spacers built in that give you that little bit of extra lock we all crave and deserve. Talk about features. And as you can see here with the GK deck on the right and the OEM on the left, ours is the one your mom warned you about. So with these, you don't need to buy rack spacers since you get 10 millimeters total of extra lock travel right off the bat. Super sick engineering engage. Now since this is part one of a series, let's actually start installing these and stop jabber jawing. Jetting right over to the car, step one is to crack the lock nut loose from the outer, then remove the split pin from the outer as well and toss a wrench, aka spanner if you're from a far, far away land and spin that thing off. Give that little guy a boop with your favorite whacking device and let it drop out just like you probably did from high school and wind the outer on off. Now grab yourself some pliers and remove the clamp on the outside of the boot. Then head inside and use your tool of choice to loosen the inner clamp and slide that boot off all casual like. Grab a wrench again, AKA spanner if you're into that, and loosen the inner and spin it on out of the rack. Now here's where we get into the real measuring contest. The OEM unit is a dismal 228 millimeter length from the base to the end, which only gives you 64 millimeters of thread engagement and or adjustment, and it doesn't even have a built-in rack spacer. I mean, come on, Toyobaru, you can do better. And it's definitely not a good look for you stock boys out there. Luckily, we've got you covered. Even our shorty is longer than stock, coming in at an overall length of 255 millimeters from base to tip, which gives you an additional 27 millimeters of length compared to the OEM joint. It also offers 93 millimeters of inward threads if you so needed them for some reason. Now, if you really want to party and you're feeling long AF lately, the top unit is the one for you. It measures a whopping 315 millimeters from base to tip, giving you 87 millimeters on top of OEM for thread engagement and adjustment. And all of that's achievable without spending a ton on pumps or pills, my friends. Think of the shorter one as OEM Plus. It's just better in every way, and is for dudes replacing OEM inners or running LCAs that are just a tad longer than stock. The top is triple X rated and is for big boy arms like the ones we offer and we'll go over in this series. If you need ones longer than this, you've got problems we ain't got solutions for, my friend. Now, for the purposes of this particular install, we are using stock lower control arms. So the short boy it is for now. Since we're going to be test fitting only right now, we aren't using any locking juice. So thread it in until snug. Now toss the outer up into the knuckle and pop the castle nut on, then wind that down. This is to set everything in place so we can mark it accurately. If you didn't move the hub, this should be pretty accurate. Line things up by overlapping the inner and outer as shown here. You want to make sure you have a minimum of 15 mil of thread engagement for hashtag safety. Now move the nut to where you think it should go to mark for your cutting session. Here we're using the nut as a guide, but there's a shameless plug to use our GK Tech 
paint pens as they are awesome. Thread the inner out and get to a bench or floor or whatever you're going to be cutting on. Using the nut as a guide, use that paint pen I mentioned earlier to mark what you will be cutting. Now, however you clamp it, be careful not to damage the threads. Spin up that cutty boy and slice the end off. If you have a belt sander, go ahead and use that to bevel the end to make it nice and smooth. If not, go ahead and just use concrete. That may work in a pinch, but good luck. Test to make sure the locking nut goes on nice and easy as shown here. Now, that being this is a steering component, and we always preach this, please use your favorite locking juice whilst installing these units. Unlike a DSM crank, we don't want these walking out when you need them the most. Apply as shown and get back to the car to wind the inner into the rack. Now tighten that good and tight and sling that rack boot over the top of the rack body letting it chill in place. Grab them squeezy boy pliers and pinch it on down then slide the outer back and move that other clamp into place sealing that rack for years to come and or until you smash that car into a wall. Grab the outer and spin it onto your fresh new inner and adjust it until it lines up where your nut needs to be which again you want to ensure that you have a minimum of 15 millimeters of thread overlap then pop the outer on the knuckle like so and spin the castle nut down until snug now eyeball as best you can to make sure that your rotor and wheel assembly is straight then lock down that inner supporting the outer with your wrench of choice now tighten and torque the castle nut to the spec shown on the screen Slip the spit pin through the nut's guts and spread that thing like an eagle and congrats, you've got some built-in lock and tons of toe adjustment just for changing your inner tie rods out. You're 100% welcome, my friends. Now please go get a damn alignment as your eyes are not as calibrated as laser beams, I promise. Enjoy these sweet, sweet pants as I explain how this is the crew that slaves away behind the scenes to make these vids happen. And we do our best to come up with new goods as often as possible possible. Keep in mind that this is only a guide. If you do need help, please have a professional install this and or reach out to us with any questions you may have. This has been Officer Dan, Johnny Caps, and our main man Zach in Japan with another GK Tech How-To. Peace.